Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. Today's guest is a three-time wheelchair Arnold professional bodybuilding champion. He is the new and reigning Olympia wheelchair professional champion. He is Harold Kelly, King Kong Kelly. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. How are you feeling, Ron? Doing great. Uh, now, I'm, before we get into your, your uh, background and all that, I'm looking at your contest record. It looks like there have only been 12 professional wheelchair events uh, held. Is, is that right or am I off? Uh, a little bit. Um, they have been, I don't want to be wrong myself, um, 17. Oh, okay. I want to say 17. I won 14. Wow. <laughs> three of them. Two of them I didn't compete in. Yep. And one, one I didn't win. Now, the one you didn't win, did you just not pose? You want to let the other guy win? Whatever. No, I lost. That's, I'm not going to go into what okay. I was. Because <laughs> I'm seeing the record. It's like, win, 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 third place. Like, something must have gone wrong that day. I don't know what. <laughs> Harold must have been having a rough day on that particular day. But uh, So, yeah, l let's get into uh, before you became a pro bodybuilder and all that. How did you first get involved in weight training and bodybuilding and all that back in the old days? Um. I played football a little bit, um, high school and college, and then, you know, I started uh, um, modeling a little bit. So I always kept myself in shape. You know, I mean, going to the gym was mandatory. Okay. Um, and then I, uh, a lot of the guys was doing the another different league, uh, NGA league, and then they was, you know, asking, do I compete? And I was like, no. And they was like, you should. You know, you look really good. So, you know, I took their, took their words for it and – Stepped my footy with that and was doing really good with that and then had a car accident in 07. Yeah, I see. Uh, in 2000, now were you living in, uh, you're from South Carolina originally? Right, and we moved to South, we moved to Texas in 05. Okay. And then I had a car accident in 07. Because in 06, I, you know, I looked up your contest history. There's a great website called musclememory.com. Yeah. It, it's not always complete because, you know, they don't have every single contest, but. I found some good stuff on there. You were uh, second that year in the NGA Southern States Natural, and I think that was as an amateur, and the other two shows were professional shows. You yeah. were fifth in the NGA Universe, the Pro Universe, and they had a yeah. Natural World Championships, took sixth place. Um, yeah. So, you know, was that your first year as a pro? Did you only compete one year as a pro at that organization? Um, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, one complete year. Okay. Well, I was getting ready for the ultimate body by Carlos that I feel real good, put a little size on. And two weeks out, no, a week out, actually a week out from September, I was supposed to go to Atlanta. That's when we had a car accident. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's talk about that fateful day. It happened in Oklahoma? Yeah. Um, um, I was going to, uh, we was taking uh, my wife Anna up to uh, her aunt's house in in, uh, not Ar in Arkansas, and yeah. we had to go through Oklahoma. And uh, on 69, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, 69 is a is, is a road that doesn't have fences on the side. So a lot of, you know, deer and fox and stuff running across the road. So I caught myself trying to miss the deer and hit the grass, spun around in the car, and ran off the side of the ravine and hit a tree. And the seatbelt is what uh, gave me my seat seatbelt lasher, or whatever you call it. Yeah. And pinched my T seven T twelve vertebrae, and um, actually I had to get me, my wife, and my daughter out the car um, um, instantly. Um, but the crazy part about it is, I stopped just before that to get me <laughs> get a honey bun and a honey bun and some milk, huh. and <laughs> and get back in the car. And, and I knew where I was at because I was only like maybe fifteen minutes down the road when it happened. Yeah. So I, I had to get my phone out, tell them where I was at, felt my legs. There was numb. And um, I couldn't feel them, feel like feel like feeling someone else's body. And uh, then my, we pushed my daughter out of the window. She went up the hill to flag someone down. Hmm. And um, while she was trying to come back, she was screaming that the car was on fire. What? Yeah. And we didn't even know it. Then we down, I could look my foot. My foot was, you could see it coming through the where the gas pedal was right there. So yeah. we had to. Get the seat belt loose, pop the seat back. I had to slide back out the back glass, get my wife out the side window. Um, and then we went in a little cubby hole um, until someone came down and got 
So the the vertebrae that the spinal injury happened because of the seatbelt. Yes, the impact when you hit real hard, the seatbelt pulls downward. Yeah. Being that I had the heaviness of my upper body, my torso swung forward really hard, and it 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 it, it, it popped it and it shifted. Hmm. But it popped the spinal cord. It broke a vertebrae. Okay. So when it when it did that, it shifted the spinal cord, pinching it severely. That's why I cut you know all your circulation out to your to your bottom half. Wow. So you know. Yeah. Sometimes they say in accidents like these, being large and muscular, like, saves you from further damage. Did, did they tell you that, that things would have been worse if you weren't muscular? Or, in this case, did it make it worse because you were heavy and you had that, that uh, physics type of uh, effect with the body snapping forward and back like that? Right, right. And, again, you know, I wasn't the big, big guy. I was only, like, what? I think 202. Okay. You know, if you was, like, maybe... 260 280 then the solidness would have been a big you know, difference whereas i would i did go for it and i'm six foot so okay two but so i'm kind of lanky still with the small waves yeah okay. all right so you know uh what, what, immediately after that the, in the days weeks after i mean at what point did you know exactly what had happened and you know what impact this was going to have on the rest of your life um i didn't really think about it too much man you know um my whole support group was there. My family was there, and everyone was there, and and it was just basically taking one day at a time from that from that time forward. And what what I need to do now? That was my main. Concern. What do I need to do now to make myself better? What I need to do now to make myself better? And and it wasn't like I was trying to hear the doctor saying, "Well, you're not be able to walk." They wasn't really saying anything because it wasn't complete. It was it was uh, it wasn't complete. Complete mean torn straightly in half. Yeah. Okay. Complete mean it was shifted and pinched severely. So. Yay, nay, yay, nay. Depends on, you know, the recovery and stuff. So um, my thing was what I need to do now to keep going forward. I mean, I always had that attitude. I don't know why it never really hit me in the head to where you would never walk again. Yeah. Um, I'm from South Carolina. I grew up in a farm. Hmm. And my dad is a Vietnam vet. Hmm. And his major, major thing he was always tell me was, don't worry about what you can't do, worry what you can do, and let's get it done. Hmm. I I grew up that way, and I think that was like embedded in my head. Head when I got to that point. Okay, what do we do now? All right. Uh, yeah. Was there a point where the where the, where the did you have surgery? Or was there talk about uh, surgery to, to try to attempt to you know get you walking again? Yeah, this, the initial surgery was line the vertebrae back up, put the rods in it, uh, put the clamps in the rod to hold it to stabilize it. Hmm. Uh, once they'd done that, it was like you know the healing process. That swelling goes down. See what comes back after the swelling goes down. So yeah, I mean, it's amazing that you had that attitude. I mean, we all like to think that we'd be strong and and move forward and and not dwell on negative things. But you know, a lot of people would. But to your credit, wow, that you that you did not. You just kept going. In fact, you know, being such a a strong, fit guy, a, a pro natural bodybuilder, a guy with a fantastic physique, you know, you were back in the gym fairly quickly too, weren't you? Yeah, I was in the gym with my turtle shell on. <laughs> <laughs> turtle shell is like a full body cast? Uh, yeah, you, have, you put it in the front, put it in the back, and Velcro it across. Okay. It's like a turtle shell around your body. Hmm. And um, and I was a manager of 24-hour fitness. Hmm. At the same time, it happened. Wow. So, you know, my whole the RVP, everyone came to the hospital, like, look, your desk is there. Whenever you want to come back, it's up to you. You know, and uh, the support group was really strong. That, that that plays a big part whenever you endure something like this, your support group. Yeah. And um and it's almost like you can't let them down, you know? Yeah. It's almost like, you know, it's not like you owe them anything, but if they got your back, you know, you know, support yourself with that and keep moving forward. But yeah, I was back in the gym, I think three months after two two let me see. I was at the uh rehab for thirty days. And then right after I got to rehab, was able to go home, I went to the gym hmm. to see what I can do. And I even just, just smell the weight. <laughs> so that must have been a, a whole process where you had to figure out a lot of things that you could do, just had to do a little differently than you did them before, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I didn't want, I, I think another thing too, I didn't want to settle in my mind what I can't do now. Hmm. I never, I never, I think I, it probably starts sneaking in like you can't do, you can't do that. Yeah. But my thing was, I don't want you to settle in my mind what I can't do. And my most main focus on what I can do. 
And the more I focused on what I could do, the yeah. easier it became to whereas there are not too many things I can't do. Hmm. Um, and like you said, I, and I, you know, I'm like a guy car shop. I'm going to hit my car shop right now. So I had a bigger car shop before my car shop. So I did everything. I literally, you know, brought the car from the auction, got my record truck, bring it in, pull it inside, take parts off of it, frame it, pull it, paint it myself, tape it up, water sand it, sold it, repo it, whatever. Yep. Um, and then after it happened, I kind of got rid of a lot of the stuff. I had to change, change shops. I got rid of that one. Um, my house is a two-story house. Um, I got rid of that, um, that size um, uh, for a flat. Uh, but I realized that, yeah, okay, what else I can do? And I had so many people getting in contact with my cars. I jumped back. I said, I'm a deal license, so I jumped back into it. Yep. And I realized that there's not too many things I can't do with it. So I started pushing myself to see what I can do with it. So I'm back pulling cars myself, framing it, painting it. I can't paint the top. <laughs> wow! <laughs> if you look at my if you look at my Instagram, you see me painting a whole car. And actually, I, I do a few things. You know, actually water sand stuff, pulling motors, jacking it up, doing a lot of stuff. I, I just love doing it. Yeah, I'll, I'll give all that at the end. But let's put it out there now. Your Instagram is uh, lowercase Mister M R M R dot O Mister O underscore wheelchair. That is that is Harold Kelly's Instagram. Everybody, check it out. Um, yeah, I mean, I was really impressed. You know, I've interviewed you a couple times, but I was really impressed at the uh, the seminar that they had the morning after the Olympia, the victory seminar or Q&A, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, uh -huh. you know, I remember one of the things, the first thing, you, one of the first things you said was uh, walking is overrated. You know, I can, walking just gets you from point A to point B, and I can roll from point A to point B. And I think everyone yeah. in that room was just, like, stunned at the, you know, the way you, the way you uh, look at the situation. If we could all look at, any challenge in life that way, you know, we'd all probably be better off and more accomplished in life than we are. So I, you lit up the room with that with that little dose of reality that you hit us with. Oh. Uh, so let's talk about the the bodybuilding. You won uh, the first. Was that the first time they had a, a wheelchair pro championships? A national title was the year you won in twenty ten. Yeah, that was the first one. That was the very first. And, yeah, and they and they at the time. You know, let's give credit to Nick Scott. Nick Scott is really the driving force behind this wheelchair bodybuilding in the in the U.S. and beyond, right? Oh yeah, he he's the driving force from day one. Matter of fact, right after my car accident, I was still going to some shows, and Nick saw me, and he like wheel behind me, like, "Do you compete?" And I'm like, "No, I just you know, I I just had an accident a few years. I like maybe two years after he saw me, hmm. a a year or two, yeah. and he said, "We should compete. We'll carry this thing to the next level." And, you know, I'm listening to him, but I was like, I was already a pro. And he don't know that. <laughs> so right, right, right. Okay, that's cool, Nick. That's cool. And then uh, my wife was like, well, you should go ahead and look into it. And I said, okay. I said, we'll, we'll look into it if you think it's good. Because my wife, you know, she, she, she was on my side um, since day one. Yeah. And, um, and uh, man, she, she, really, uh, she really helped me through this. I think that having that really strong force with me really uh, propelled me to where I'm at right now. And yeah. especially with my mom, my sisters and friends, but get me wrong, don't get me wrong, I give them 100% credit and God and being number one. Yeah. But having that right beside me the whole time, man, it, 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 it made a heck of a difference. I mean, you know, I, I definitely give any, any, any spouse who stands by their, their mate through, you know, anything, like whether it's an illness or an accident, a disability, whatever. I mean, I give them a lot of credit, but, you know, at the same time, I think it would have been a, it's, it's a different situation when the, the spouse who's dealing with whatever is really angry and bitter and depressed. Right. And uh, you weren't. So, you know, you were, you kept your spirits up. You were positive. You always, you, you just kept moving forward and figured, what, what am I doing next? What can I do? What can I do? Instead of what can't I do? So, you know, I think you, it's a special situation you guys had, mainly because of your attitude. But absolutely, right. give her give her a ton of credit. That's Anna, yeah. Anna Kelly, everybody. I like it. Anna underscore Kelly. What's her last name? Anna. Anna Kelly. What? It's. it's I, get the, I get the name right. Anna. A N A. Yep. Anna. Okay. Uh, so 2011 was when they started the professional contest for wheelchair bodybuilding, and I mean. Right. You know, I, I'm sure you had no idea what to think of it. You, you had no idea who the other guys were going to be. I mean, you had been a pro in another organization. So what was going through your head when 
this was all coming, starting to form, and, and it was becoming a reality. You're going to be a pro in the IFBB now. Man, to be honest with you, man, um, it didn't hit me hard until, like, literally way after. But they're actually going to it and preparing for it. Mm-hmm. And when I got there, you know, uh, Greer, uh, Jason Greer yeah. looked phenomenal. Um, Ludovic looked phenomenal. You have big, uh, my big from Germany, uh, Dan. Yeah. Dan was there. Uh, Nick was there. Um, you know, and I was I was lean and smaller. Hmm. And so, be, to be honest with you, I wasn't even looking for the win. Hmm. I just wanted to compete. I just wanted to compete. You know, show up. And I was hearing about you know Jason Greer, and he looked he looked really good. He looked really good. Yeah. And you know, you know coming into it, I was like, okay, I just want to compete, get back on the stage, you know, do what I do as pastime, go back to the gym, work uh, at my shop. I'm good. This is a hobby. You know good with it because I worked out all my life. It wasn't like, you know, uh, I jumped into it just for that. I've been doing this. Yeah. When, when, when the judge saw my condition of my muscles, you know, one of the judges literally told me, he said, he could tell the difference in your muscles and someone else. Mm-hmm. And your, just, just your, your, your overall flow of muscle being that you've been doing this for a minute. It wasn't no overnight build here. Yeah. I mean, you started yeah. training what it's, uh, I, I read one place, 1990, you started training. Was that right? Yeah. So yeah, you know, so by the time you got on stage as a pro, it had already been a good you know over a dozen years, basically, or about a dozen years. So, you know, what, at, at what point were you winning so many shows that you realized you're kind of dominant at this? You're kind of like the the Ronnie Coleman or the uh, Phil Heath of this wheelchair bodybuilding, just very very tough to beat. I think after the uh, it really it really dawned on me after the fourth the fourth or fifth win. Oh, so, and uh, me and my wife talked about it, you know, and, you know, I'm very spiritual, man. And when you know that God put something in you and you actually tapped into it, you really tapped into what God put into you, then that I realized I need to even make this better because there's a reasoning now. It's not just because it's not just for me. It's more than just me now. And when I realized that, that's when I wanted to take it to another level myself. And I really did. And being able to, you know, talk to more people and give them explanation from the backside of this, not just the foresight, the backside of it. And I used to get a lot of, well, I thought, I thought bodybuilders were, were stuck up and arrogant. So I said, no, that's a myth, man. I don't, believe don't believe everything you hear, man. It's, it's, that's not the reality of it. Yeah. And, you know, just to talk to people in the middle of my workout, I'll stop because again, I, I recognize what this, what this blessing is. So, um, I don't worry about the about the big the big the big wins all the time. Don't get me wrong, get ready. I'm I'm one of them. Yeah, but it's more than just that. Yeah, I mean, it, we we use we throw the word inspirational around a lot. It's kind of overused, but in this case, I can't really yeah. imagine the amount of people who have in person uh, on Facebook uh, through your website, uh, which is kingkongnation.com. Everybody, kingkongnation.com. You know, you must have had so, and you continue to get so many people, you know, thanking you for the inspiration because whether you're uh, able bodied or not or whatever, you see what you've been able to accomplish. Uh, and, you know, you, it, it's, it's not like you had this great physique and you just you got in an accident and you just continued on bodybuilding. Your physique now, uh, I looked at the one picture from before, your physique has gotten better and better and better. You know, you keep yeah. getting. Improving body parts. You got one of the. You got a back that could stand next to anybody's arms. that could be next to anybody's uh, chest, delts. The whole. I mean, your whole upper body is phenomenal. And um, it wasn't always the case. I look back at the old pictures. You've worked hard. You put a lot of muscle on. And you know, most people would say that that's like impossible. There's no way a guy in a wheelchair could have been able to accomplish that. But and, here, and and with the age. Yeah, you're. Not, I forget. You're no spring chicken. You're not as old as some people. But 47 now. Yeah. Well, Forty-seven, still young, still young and vibrant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a forty-three-year-old Mister Olympia now, so <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all relative. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, how how often do you? How many messages and things like that do you deal with on a regular basis? How many? What again? How many like messages? How many people are contacting you? You know, oh. thanking you and, want, and looking for advice or just thanking you or whatever. That's, that's hourly. Mm, yeah. And then it doesn't bother me. If, then, now, if I'm busy, 
you know, like we, me and you talk, you know, if I'm at the auction, if I'm doing something, and if I can get to it, I get to it. If not, I'll go, I'll get my phone, I'll check it, and I'll be like, I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Just give me a minute. Thank you for uh, your comment. And I'll, I'll get back with them. Have I missed a few? Um, yeah, but again, sometimes I, I'll go back through it all over and catch a guy three months away. Like, I'm, I, I apologize for taking so long to get back with you. You know, here's your answer, and I'll talk to him. And I have some guys that uh, that we talk pretty much almost every day, especially a lot of the guys in the wheelchair. Yeah. The wheelchair guy? Oh, man, we'll talk almost daily. Yeah. We'll talk almost daily. Yeah, the one thing I've, I've, I think I've been to about five or six of these now, uh, the, the pro wheelchair events, and uh, I'm, I'm just always really pleased to see the camaraderie between you guys. It's not like uh, the open bodybuilder, the 212 guys, they hate each other or anything, but they're not that friendly. It's like, it, it's kind of, it's, it's a, they're polite to each other, but they're not many of them seem to actually like each other. Uh, you yeah. guys, like, it, it's almost like looking at a group of guys who have known each other forever up there. You know, you guys, you guys hug and fist bump and high five, and you know, it, it, it's a family up there. It's, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen pros who are trying to all beat each other's asses up there be so supportive of each other. Man, you know what? If you really go back in your days with the Arnold Schwarzenegger days, that's exactly what it was. Hmm. That's exactly what it was. Uh, Arnold's trained with uh, what's his name? Um, Franco. Yeah. No. They live together and train and compete against each other. I mean, that's what that's what it's about. I mean, yeah. we've gotten so far off. Like, a lot of guys have gotten so far off to you know, in their own zone. But bodybuilding is is our world. It's not a big world, really. And if you really look at it, when you got these guys to compete against you, we've seen them for years. So develop a relationship, and it's only going to help both of you out, really, because your training method and what you're going to get from your body, I can't stop it. <laughs> well, I'm be hot with you. I can't stop your development. You can't stop my divider, development. I don't care what you see I'm doing. I'm doing it my way. Yeah. Just that small difference how I'm doing is going to give you a different development how you're going to do yours. Yeah. So I don't worry about that. I don't worry about telling somebody what I'm doing. Okay, can you can you master that the way I'm mastering it? Mm -hmm. So that's that's least I worry. So if you don't worry about that, then you can open the other doors up you know, and, and, and bridge the gap with uh, fellowship. Uh, I want to get into the gym stuff. Now, do you train by yourself or do you train with somebody? Because I can imagine doing training in a chair if I had to, but I would want someone to help hand me bars and dumbbells and stuff. Do you have someone that sort of assists you in things like that, or do you do everything on your own? Um, it depends. It depends what part of my training I'm in. Hmm. Um, now, my wife is my number one partner, workout partner. I tell everybody that. Okay. Before my accident, when I put eight plates on each side of the, in squat, she would be one spot me. When I'm benching 500, guys be like, let me get it, let me get a dog. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, my wife, she, she got it. She got it. <laughs> wow. If I can't bench it, I'm doing that already. <laughs> so, they, they want to tell you that. But outside of that, you know, we're going really heavy, 150, 160, 170, almost 200 pound dumbbells. Mm -hmm. I have a team, I have a team of guys that, you know, we work out together and they'll hand it to me when it needs to be handed to me. Yeah. I mean, and it, 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 we work as a group, a group anyway. So I like working out groups and guys, you know, hands down, whenever you work out, or come get me or give me a call and I'll meet you there. Or I got a certain, when I'm getting ready for a show, they know 9.30, 11 o'clock, we're going to meet and I'm getting ready for the show. So they're dedicated to be there and push me through and have a team getting ready for a show. Now after the show, right now I'm hitting this because I'm getting my wife ready for a show right now. Oh. So I hit miss and work out. I do that by myself. I can, I can do the things, the small things by myself until I start getting my grind back on, get back into the grind. Yeah, I mean, you talk those heavy dumbbells. There's not too many people that that don't have somebody hand them to, regardless. You know, yeah. even Ronnie Coleman in the video, somebody was handing him those 200 pound dumbbells all the time. <laughs> he wasn't picking them up himself. That's a lot of cause yeah. that's half the uh, that'd be half the set just getting those stupid things up there into play. <laughs> but uh, so I'm thinking, like you know, back you must be able to do just about everything: pull downs, yeah. chin ups. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I still have to hold me down if I'm going really heavy. Yeah. Someone have to hold me down or strap me down. I, even when I get strapped down, they still got to hold me down when I'm going really heavy with rolls in my back. But if I'm laying on the bench and I'm doing rolls, I don't really need anybody about that. And my belt, I use my belt a lot on a lot of different machines. Yeah. So the belt will help me out a lot in holding me down. So use it kind of like a seat belt almost. It's not the weight belt. Put the weight belt. I get it. I get like a large weight belt. Yeah. And I put it around the bench or yeah. whatever bench I'm on, around the bench on me. So basically, I get a 2X belt that'll go around the bench and me. 
Okay. Yeah, because like some of the hammer strength machines come with those yeah, those belts latch together like a like a like a seat belt or an air, an airplane belt, so you can't move and you while you're pulling. So yeah, I can imagine. You know, we talk about you don't you don't focus on what you can't do, but there's for upper body, there's really not much you can't do at all, right? If you even if you stop and think about it, there's really not. I mean, pull ups. I do pull ups with plates between my legs. I do dips. I get up on the dip bar. Mm -hmm. You scrap the bar, and I, I went as heavy as six plates on, um, strapped on to me Jeez. doing dips. So yeah, I don't know anybody that's done that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They just ain't showing too much. But I I go heavy, man. I go heavy and. Uh, Pushing forward to the next level. That's a model. I'm always trying to go heavy, and and moderate, and moderate. So I'm doing like six sets, eight sets. First two or three sets like thirties and twenties, and then we'll come all the way down um, to get the heavy in after the blood get in the system. Okay, yeah, because uh, like I said, you know, you've got tremendous thick, round, dense muscles. It's it's you don't get that look without. You can tell who's trained light and who's trained heavy, and one look at you and you know that that was heavy weights that did that. That was not. Yeah. That was not pumping workouts and cables. That was a lot of that. You said five hundred. You bench. You bench five hundred pounds. That's crazy. Yeah, my my max bench was five. I got to five thirty. Five thirty five was. I had to stop before I started getting ready for the honor one year. Hmm. And I was trying to get to six hundred, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. But when you start leaning back down, then you know once you stay away from that weight, you got to work your way back up to that weight. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm, I'm accustomed to doing. Uh, 30 reps, no, 30, 35 reps, 40 reps with the 225. Wow. I'll do that. I'll do that every once in a while. I'll do 315, 315 for 15 or 20. Hmm. Uh, and then I go to 405 and I work with the 405 in that gray area right there. Yeah. And hmm. That's a good solid workout with me. Now, I know I've asked you this before, but where did the nickname come from? King Kong. <laughs> uh, a lot of people from my gym, you know, used to call me Kong. Um, in the gym, being at the silverback, silverback gorilla, because I was the oldest one in the gym, but I was one of the most weight. So they'll call me the silverback. And then uh, my one, my mother-in-law would call me Kong because, you know, I was just strong. And then a few people would call me Kong all the time. So I had one little kid. He would walk in the gym. I'm talking about 25 Fitness, 50,000 square foot gym. He'd walk in the front desk and be like, Kong! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm the manager here. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. like something I would do. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Ronnie, would yell, Ronnie used to yell, yeah, buddy, top of his lungs across the gym. <laughs> Come on. Okay. So uh, tell me about the businesses. You, so you got this. You, you've always had a car shop. You have a, a collision and repair shop right now. Does that take up most of your time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, King, King Kong Nation. King Kong, King Kong Nation um, Autoplex. Okay. Um, that's most of my time. Be after I leave the uh, studio, our uh, studio gym. I, in the morning, I go and train my wife. Then I have a few clients between ten and twelve, and around twelve or one, I head my over to my shop right here, and I'm here majority of the day. And then around six, I leave out. Then I get my workout in between six and eight, somewhere up in there, okay. and then home, and then manage the uh, online stuff with our King Kong Nation online stuff. And get that done um, after after I get my work out in. Okay, so this was a great year for you. You won the Arnold again for the third time. You won the Dallas Europa, which you won that before too, right? And, right. Uh, and the Olympia, which was, this is the first year they had had uh, wheelchair at the Olympia. Do you know how how did it come about? That uh, how did they finally get wheelchair into the Olympia? Do you know? Man, you know, um, Nick was pushing for it hard, and then. After, you know, after the development with Arnold, the growing back to back to back, you know, um, he finally decided, you know, that it's going to open doors up to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, uh, uh, and uh, what's the girl name? I forgot her name, but Cindy. They, they really, yeah, they really went into and looked at the development. And they were working with Nick for a long time. And, you know, Jim said it was time. Mm -hmm. And I guess the thumbs up. They want to see some real good quality muscle, which they've been seeing at the Arnold's. And especially and in Europa, and over the years, so it, it grew to that point now. And the guy they pulled a guy from India who was at another 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 federation, but he done a few shows in the INBF or something like that. But they was able to uh, write him in to compete because he looked really good too. So yeah, um, yeah. competition. Yeah, yeah. I know they have very very strict rules about organizations and how you qualify to be in the IPB, but 
I think in a case like this where this division sort of transcends the average meathead stuff, if you know what I mean. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, more, about, it's more about inspiration and, you know, showing exactly. up what people are capable of. So I would let guys slide if, they, if they're a pro in some organization. I would let them in, but that's, you know, that's just me. Um, do, do, you feel, do you feel a responsibility now as the, as the champ, as the Arnold, multiple Arnold champ and now the Olympia champ, that you really should defend those titles like every year? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, um, you know, had a, the, the typical Mr. Olympia don't do nothing but the Olympia the following year. Right. Being that we don't have, um, that, that momentum yet. Um, I'm always going to do the Arnold. And I was talking to my wife and my team, which one we're going to do for next year. I'm definitely going to do the Arnold. I'm going to continue to do the Arnold. Yeah. Um, I may not do the Canada and I may not do the Europa. I'm not sure yet. Um, but if another Arnold open up, whereas Australia, wherever the other Arnolds are located, I'm definitely going to do those other Arnolds too. Okay. If they open the doors to another wheelchair pro Arnold at another, um, in another country. Cause I was, at, I was in Toronto in early June and you were on the score sheets. And when they get, yeah. when the, when you guys came out, I'm like, where's Harold? Where'd he go? <laughs> Did, was that a last minute thing you decided not to do it? Nah, actually, I intended to do it. It's just everything didn't didn't line up for me to uh, the border issue. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 tough to get ready for multiple shows unless you're someone who stays naturally lean. Do you stay pretty close to contest condition all the time? I do. Huh? I never get over fifteen percent. Wow. Okay. I never get over fifteen percent. Actually, when I'm getting ready for a show, I get bigger. Wow. Uh, yeah. it, and that's the old school way. That's how they all used to do it. You know, they weren't bulking up, bulking up to these marshmallows and then trimming down like a lot of the guys do now. Uh, you know what I wanted to ask you? I've never asked this. You know, what do you do for cardio? Um, there's a cycle bike that the rehab facilities have them. Some 24, some gyms have them. It's the cycle bike, the bag you do right here. Okay. That, and again, and then when your meal plan is very detailed and I do my own nutrition with my wife, if you get your meal plan right, you don't have to do a lot of cardio. And again, if you're not putting all that excess weight on, when you start exciting those muscles, it's going to absorb all that extra up anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you know your combination for your body, you can cut cardio down. But that crisp look you need for stage, that's when you have to do a little extra cardio. Yeah. And I'm doing cardio 45 days out, I'll start my cardio regimen. 45 yeah. days out? 45 days out. And how much you, how much you typically do? I'll start with the 20 minutes, then 30 minutes then 40 minutes and then for the Olympia I said I got to get tight so what I did is something totally different I did I was doing an hour but I was doing 35 minutes I was an hour and 10 minutes 35 minutes one session and 35 minutes another session in one day so I was up like an hour and a half but two sessions you must have been and, sick of that hand bike by the end of the, by the time the Olympia came around <laughs> yeah. I haven't touched the hand bike since then <laughs> boy so you know, what are your goals I mean it, it must be tough because now you've You've accomplished everything. You've won, would say, fourteen out of seventeen wheelchair pro shows have ever been held, right? All right. I mean, you're you're Mr. Olymp you're Olympia champ. You're a multiple Arnold champ. So yeah. when you sit down and set goals, I mean, now what, what, where do you go from there? What, what what's your next step? Um, to look better next year. Yeah. Okay. Look better next year to to to. to to shine that shine what I'm where I'm at to make myself look even better. So when people look at the wheelchair class, they know it's not just some, you know, a little, Oh, just put guys on stage and let them do their thing. No, when they look at me, they're going to like, Whoa. So I want to, I won't get a war effect even the next year and next year. Like you say, you, you saw my pictures getting better every year. Yeah. I want to continue getting better every year to whereas, you know, uh, Phil is my boy, man. I look at his physique, his total physique. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm chasing. Really. To look just like, they literally look like that. You know, so, have the best belt muscles, full all the way around, good size all the way through, wide back, dense back, um, you know, and sharp and detailed like you know what Sean brought to the table this year. So, I'm I'm always trying to get better. That's that's my goal to get better every time I hit the stage, and I'm gonna hit the stage every year until I can't do it anymore. Yeah, and you're you've got no signs of slowing down. You're 47 now, and yeah, I mean, you stand up close to you, just like Roden. There's not one line in your face. It's not Botox and fillers. I think it's just clean living. <laughs> you know about that? I stopped, I stopped drinking sodas and stopped eating pork in 92. Wow. Good for you, man. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. But you know, in terms of like body parts, everything's. Would you say everything's pretty balanced? Because that's that's what I see when I look at you. I don't see anything yeah. weak. You know your own flaws, you know, and I have no problem looking at. I think my I, I really want to focus on my triceps. I want them to get a little more crisp, yeah. a little more detail. Um, I want to think my back. My back was a little thicker than what it is right now, and I sacrificed some of it coming down. I want to grab grab that back back again, get some more dense. I changed gyms. I went from twenty four to Fitness Connection, and I noticed certain exercises I did in in uh, twenty four didn't have it at Fitness Connection. So the density of my back kind of went away a little bit. So mm-hmm. I'm a capital on that for my next my next deal and um i'm still working at both gyms but i'm gonna get back to that machine that i know that made my back more thicker cool okay sounds like a plan yeah. so you'll most likely be at the arnold you, you, you'll always do the arnold yeah i think you're always going to do the olympia because those are the two <laughs> who wouldn't want to win those every day every year if they could right, <laughs> all right. Uh, and we all dream about those those titles and you got them both now so uh yeah. cool so uh in addition to that you know any anybody Anybody beyond, you know, your wife you already thanked. Who are some of the people you would you want to thank that have been on your side, on your team for the past few years that have, that have helped make your success possible? Man, um, just some close friends of mine that have always been there, man. They've been working out with me um, since day one. It, the family, my family, my main family, my sisters, and my uh, my mom, you know, they really support me in what I do. Hmm. Um my little workout teams that develop over different years and it changes. Yeah. Um, um, a guy named Mahesh was always there. Actually, <laughs> he was paying me to train him, but he was always working out with me to hand me my weights. <laughs> so, but he was, he was a big, a big, uh, contribute in regards to helping me work out every day. And, uh, you know, Andrew, I got Sean that worked out, working out with me now. Um, and over the years, man, just, a few people I can't really say right now, but you know, okay. this is my team, my, my support group. Whenever I hit a gym, they always there for me. And it's a lot of them. That's why I really can't name all of my name. Yeah. It's a lot of them. They'll jump in the boat with me and work out with me, give me support, always be right there, man. And and, and whenever I go, they're ready to work out with me and have me the weight that I need, man. So and, um, 24 hour fitness family, I would say. And now my fitness connection family, I would say. Okay. So you know, you're, you're the ambassador for the division. You're the clear champ of the division so where do you want to see it go and grow how, how can it be how can it become bigger and better than it is now um a couple of guys a couple of us guys was talking about really um giving back giving back and we want to do more you know speaking at, at a different facilities you know disability facilities uh, especially with children mm-hmm. um going to these places whereas a wheelchair group going to these places to let them know what they can achieve and um speaking more life into um a lot a few people who is disabled. Yep. And um and being able to do a little more than just win a championship, man. Just give back by speaking and giving inspiration to those people. Right on. All right, cool. Yeah. So let's give everyone your social media. You have KingKongNation.com is your website. Right. And, and your Instagram is Mr. Under it's uh, Mr. Dot O underscore wheelchair. Uh, right. do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, my YouTube is Harold Kelly. Okay. And everybody, that's K K E L L E Y. You got to add that extra E in there. E Y. Yes. And I would love for the guys to subscribe to it, build that up so we can, you know, show videos to guys who are in a wheelchair and they can see exactly what, what else they can work on, how they can get on the machine. And a lot of guys just want to know how to get on the machine, how, what I'm doing. So when they go to my, subscribe to my, uh, my YouTube, yeah. they'll see a lot of things in detail. You know, how I get on the machine, how I put the belt on, you know, talk about T-level injuries, injuries. Because so the T-level injury is it's very, uh, how can I say, it's, it's very complex because the higher it is, most guys will see a guy on stage and he have a gut in the wheelchair. Well, he can't control that. If he's like in a six C, six injury. Mm. Or his, ab, his abdominal areas, he can contract his muscle. But if it's high, like about four, five, six, he can't even control it. It's almost like he can't move his legs, like he can't control his core. Wow. I did not know that. Hmm. Yeah. See, you know, especially Johnny Quinn. Johnny Quinn is like kind of high, but his upper body is solid. And you wonder why his gut is there because he can't control that. He's had no contraction on his muscles. So his meal plan, meal prep has to be very detailed in regards to trying to get it to come down a little bit. 
Um, so that's a big play in 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 judging. The judges got to know which guy um, level is because, yeah. for instance, like I was talking to Johnny, whereas he has to win literally the big poses and then take the take the hit on the ab pose because he can't do anything about it. But if he win first, 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 first in all the other 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 positions, he'll do really good. So, yeah. you know, you just have to know what you're working with. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, because the, the judges can't can't say, well, this guy gets a pass for having a gut, and the other guys have these shredded flat abs. I mean, right. even even though well, you, you just explained it, he can't. There's nothing this guy can do to have a a tight, small, flat midsection like these other guys do. But you know, right. as as a judge, what do you do? You got to judge what's in front of you. But, uh, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Cool, man. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna check that that channel out because I think that's fascinating because. I always say this, whenever I see someone that's overcome some great challenge, it makes you stop and think, you know, all the dumb excuses all of us tell, tell ourselves every day on why we can't do this, why we can't do that, they're mostly just bull. It's, it's, it's just a lie that we tell to ourselves. You know, yeah. seeing, seeing what you've been able to accomplish, sort of a slap back to reality saying, you know what, your, your excuses and your little problems, they're not as, uh, they're not as, as, uh, as big, a, big a problem as you think they are. You know, if yeah. this guy, this happened to him, and he's managed to do all this. You could certainly reach your goals. You just need to rework it and come back at a different angle and, and work harder. So thank you, man. Thank you. All right, cool. So, again, thank you, Harold. It's been, uh, been my honor and privilege for the interview. Congratulations on the Olympia title. And uh, looking forward to seeing you go for a fourth consecutive Arnold Classic title in a few months, too. That's going to be something else. <laughs> Cool. So, everybody, thanks for watching Ron Ryan Report with Harold King Kong Kelly.